Yes, like I was saying yesterday, I interacted with our chief cohort NETA in, in South Africa, who is responsible for South Africa, for Lesotho, and for the Kingdom of Eswatin. Uh, I, I quoted the stepping up that uh, in the sense that we did most of our bookings for the team that is moving from this side. The, the, there is a team of people who will be doing certain duties that side. We have got a four-day revival. So there, are, there is a team of around five people who will be doing essential duties like editing of videos, media camera work and so on, as well as uh, singing. Hallelujah. Who are moving with me. There are people who pledged their money in the past, uh, more than two months ago, and we were able to do bookings for the team which is moving from this side. And then for the two saints, uh, Pastor Bill Zimunya and Sister Ngob, uh, the church, that side, there are some members who had uh, pledged that they were going to, to pay for their transport, but we are hearing stories after stories. And uh, now we no longer have time on our side because we are already in November and the Pumalanga province has got a lot of tourist attraction places. You have got your Kruka National Park in there and we are moving closer to the festive season. And we are concerned that uh, flight tickets may run out and we don't have an efficient car that can carry these saints with their suitcases from Johannesburg uh, to all the way to Mbombela. Plus we didn't plan that anyone will travel by road because when we arrive that site, the following day we will be doing ministry so we don't want people tired, the, tired and falling asleep during the revival. So that's why we pre prepared, preferred, we, we preferred to fly. So initially that was the arrangement, but we are getting a lot of stories from that site. And from, we are being told that by next week things will be okay. We can't wait until next week because we'll be moving up to mid-November. So there are people who, had, um, who were on standby. There are some saints who were on standby. We had said if any need arises in, in this meeting that we're going to, to, to hold in Pumala, they'll be willing to, to chip in to assist here and there where we, we need to cover the expenses and other things which are essential. So we can't leave Pastor Pils in Munya because it's a worship. Uh, I don't know how the people there in that church worship, you see. That's the challenge that I have. So I prefer to move around with at least one person whose worship I am used to because I'm wired prophetically. When people sing songs which I don't know, I completely become disconnected and I become dysfunctional, you see. So I normally prefer to, to move with it where possible. If it is impossible or too expensive, I make do with the present worship team, which is there, because I can't sing myself, you see. So Pastor Pils in Munya is needed to that sign. So, and also Sister Ngobi, because she's the one who coordinates the people who will be coordinating even their pastors who are coming from, from Swaziland and other church leaders from within South Africa. They are in touch with her. So she has the records, she has the details of all these people. If we leave her behind, no one will be able to do liaison work there. At that church which is hosting us, they won't be knowing our, our members from all over South Africa and from outside South Africa. So I'm appealing to those who, who are on standby to assist us to, to, to send whatever money is needed so that we book for Pastor Bill Zimun and uh, Sister Ngobi so that they fly with us to, to Mpumalanga province and we do the crusade or the revival. We are supposed to book as early as possible so that we don't run out of uh, flight space. Because now that we are in November, uh, even flight tickets, they will become very, very expensive. Hallelujah. So that's, that's the update that I have for the time being. 
When I hear an update about the, the public address system, the PA system, I'm going to inform you. Uh, I, I, I talked to the coordinator in South Africa. She promised me that uh, after talking to the team in Pumalanga province, she will update us with past numbers about their state of preparedness and also the technical capacity of their PA system. And we will try to, to, to also connect our um, technical team here so that they check the, specific, the specification of things like speakers, things like uh, the mixers, uh, and all the other pieces of equipment that they have. How many bus pins they have, how many line array speakers they have, and in the event of an overflow, whether they've got extra televisions, because you can't be having people seated in a tent and not following whatever is going on. So we need to check all of those details. Initially, we had the impression that everything is under control, but it seems these saints, they are just operating by faith without a time frame. So we have to make do with what we can do. Hallelujah, to redeem the situation. So wherever you are praying, continue to pray for these preparations. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for these preparations. Uh, I know it, uh, you, you, you may not be happy or you may be shocked that there are some things which are not in order. But uh, again, we are being hosted, so we are relying on the information that we are being given. But I am a leader, I've traveled a lot. Uh, to me, it doesn't look right to, to, to book two weeks to an event, to book people two weeks to an event. How do they plan? They can't plan. That's why we book months in advance ourselves. One, ticket prices will be very, very low. Two, if you can't book, uh, I mean, flights, you can make other arrangements for people to be transported. But you can't tell people on short notice that they, are, they have to travel by road when they don't have a very strong car which can travel nearly 350 or 400 kilometers. You see? So I think we are done on that.